What is up, Watch Fam? I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and welcome to Rant TNH. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Hamilton uh, and a new release by them, a new release of theirs uh, that just kind of missed the mark. But uh, that's it. Let's before we do so, quick wristwatch check. Uh, I am wearing my personal Rolex, reference sixteen oh one. It's an amazing watch, definitely my favorite. Uh, the watch itself, and then my kind of history and significance behind it. It's my first watch. It's very nostalgic. So this is awesome. I have it on Hermes uh, tie strap, which you either love or hate. I personally love, but uh, plenty of people hate it. So it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's all about having your own style, right? But before we get into today's episode, uh, if you do not follow us already on Instagram, go ahead and do so. We are at Theo and Harris. We have 28.7 thousand followers right now. Uh, we delivered the best Instagram content, well, the best watch content on Instagram. So if you don't follow us uh, already, do so now. And now we can get into the episode. Okay, so my thesis here, and we're going to be talking about it in respect to Hamilton, um, is long form. Um, I am I love progression. I love fixing things. I love when brands realize there's a problem and then fix it. Great. But I think that creating a watch um, with obvious problems is stupid. Uh, I think that there, you know, there's the unsung hero that fixes shit before something's released. You know, and, and I think that. Uh, what happens if you can if your baseline is, is is great with no obvious flaws as it is if the first thing you release is is pretty damn good um, and and only you see the flaws under a microscope and that's great because you have the next three four five six seven ten years lifetime uh, to make a better 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 version of that but Hamilton just released their new Intramatic, and I have no idea why it's called an Intramatic, uh, and, I'll, and I'll get into the history and everything in a second, but there's an obvious flaw. I mean, just an obvious flaw right in my face. It's 43 millimeters, and I don't know why. I cannot figure out why Hamilton decided to make a beautiful, well-proportioned chronograph huge and isolate a lot, a lot, a lot of people. Uh, I don't know what, you know, statistically best, you know, wrist sizes are, or best watch sizes are, but I know because I'm in this fucking business, you know, like I know because I deal in Rolex uh, and I deal in a lot of different things every day um, that although vintage watches are too small and I, to I, know too, I, mean, I don't think they're too small, but I know that objectively the market thinks that they're too small. The people think 34 millimeters is too big, but on the same token, I'm finding every day I'm talking to hundreds of watches geeks per day that 38 is real like 36 36 37 38 39 and 40 with Rolex that's where a lot of people most people the vast majority of people that I know are falling uh, and a lot of people don't even want to go to 40 unless it's Rolex so you know and once again let's, let's, let's proceed from here with my kind of you know understanding of my own boundaries if, if Hamilton has done their research and they know that 43 millimeters is the smartest move, uh, and they know that 43 is the one that's gonna make them sell to the most people, and maybe they're making a you know a limited release in a country where people have large risks, like Eastern Europe, um, then that's fine. And, and you know what, good business, good for you, congratulations. But uh, I don't see that happening. I think that 43 is far too large. I think that 39 would have been optimal. Uh, and, and, and that's it. I mean, that's, that's really my, my big issue. So now let's get into the, the watch itself, what it is, why it was created, and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, in 1968, Hamilton released a Chronograph A and Chronograph B. Uh, same watch, uh, powered by the Value 7730 and then 34, uh, and, and they're, it's, it's good stuff. I mean, they're very collectible. People, you know, that watch later became the Chronomatic, uh, and people collect these watches very you know, avidly. They used to be 500 bucks, now they're 4,000, and it's totally ridiculous. I don't think the 4,000 is the steady market price, but I've seen them sell that high, which is ridiculous. So I can absolutely see from Hamilton's perspective why they think that this watch, this Intramatic, once again, I have no idea why it's called that, uh, is appropriate why it makes sense, why, why, uh, you know, why they would make it. Because it is probably their most successful model right now on the vintage market. Uh, and it, it is so, and it is so for a reason. Because it is objectively handsome. It has a sporty look. I mean, Hamilton's a classic brand. It's a very sporty look. I love the rally strap. Everything about it is well executed. I mean, this watch to me has extreme appeal. Uh, no question. For really people on all ends of the spectrum. But still, uh, I just feel like they missed the mark. And it's actually 42 millimeters, not 43. I just checked it. Uh, but still, I mean, it, it doesn't change my thesis. Uh, I think that it's such a stupid thing to make the Gen 2, like the like the second iteration of this Intramatic, which they'll release in a couple of years, I'm sure, why case size would drop three millimeters. Like, that shows you were really 
wrong the first time, like hardcore wrong. I would much rather have them focus on something else in three years and they're re-releasing. Uh, and, and you know, that, that, that's, that's really it. I just think that it's such an amazing opportunity that has been largely missed. If I was selling this watch, I would identify the uh, the consumer as someone who's obviously into into watches. Uh, is you know, At $2,200, this is not like, a, oh, okay, like cool watch, you know put it on my credit card. That's kind of a price range that I think falls much more into people uh, who are at least interested, maybe not ready to take a big, big dive on something more expensive, uh, like a Glasswood Original or or like, you know, any other chronograph plus 5,000. $2,200 is a great price range. Uh, it can get someone who owns a sub and wants a chronograph a great chronograph. But at 43 millimeters, I, I just have to, I have to think 42 millimeters, I still do think that people are going to say, wow, this kind of looks like it's too big for my wrist. And a lot of people are going to say that. So, uh, so that's it. You know, I, I think that it's a huge missed opportunity. I would very rarely recommend this watch uh, because of the millimeter size. Uh, I would really only recommend this watch to someone who's like you're either huge, like huge wristed into, into Panerai, into huge Breitlings. That makes sense to me. Then I can say, okay, like go right ahead. Uh, but but, uh, but this watch to me, it's just it's just a blown opportunity. Uh, it's not supposed to be a, a, you know, a deep diving sports watch where the bulk justifies it. It's not supposed to be this, you know, that's just badass pilot's watch. I mean, this is just a, a little old vintage chronograph that I think that they blew up, but uh, but lost sight of what the purpose was. Uh, it's become just a dinner plate as opposed to, uh, you know, a chronomatic. That's it guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you understood my rambling there. I hope you guys have an awesome Monday. And don't forget to check out the watches in the watch shop at theoandharris.com. Uh, they go live tomorrow morning, bright and early 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. See you soon.